by Atea had come to an end as we hugged our pal Travi and set off for our 20 nautical mile sail to the famous island of Bora Bora. That, uh, I've read and heard on podcasts and in Dr. Scott Barry Kaufman's psychology podcast and in the book of his that I read, it said that to an easy way to increase overall well-being or the quickest, cheapest way to do that is to, at the end of each day, take five minutes to write down things that you're grateful for. Aww. And, but Elena and I, We've got a lot of, we're very, very busy, but we live a different sort of life. So I think for us, stuff like this is more important, being away from friends and family. I just got a bit funny. Aww. <laughs> As is often the case, there were no mooring balls left for us in the main town. We were losing sunlight, so we dropped anchor just around the corner on a nice sandy bottom. We understand him rightly. He means by that that our present intellectual processes are still very, very rudimentary. And here come the neurophysiologists, the neurobiologists, and say, yes, indeed, two-thirds of the cortex is until now largely idle. Two-thirds of our cortex has not been fully enlisted in our intellectual processes. So today we're heading into town in Bora Bora. We've learned now, Lenny. And we're going to upload the next SLV episode. A man from a resort here messaged us a few days ago and said we would love to have you for a few nights. So, yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty sweet little room over the water. What are you? Yeah, we're right. <laughs> so, yeah, just start away from the vagabond and then we're Woo. off to Rayatonga oh, in the I'm Cook so Islands annoyed. in a few days, waiting sorry for the right weather. I'm really annoyed. You're, I know. You're annoying and you're annoyed. Go on, one more time. Yeah! This is a ferry port. Cunningham is chained up over there with a few locks, so fingers crossed. We jumped in a car that took us to the designated ferry port for our hotel, being the Pearl Beach Resort. We didn't really have an idea as to what we were in for, but we did hear rumours on the way that that's where they filmed that terrible movie, Couples Retreat, which we still don't know if it's true or not. We're here with Silva. And we've got some lays. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. That's yeah, nice. Uh, I think it's important for you to discover what's uh, more about us. How's this for reception, hey? It's pretty nice. <laughs> After we checked in, we were taken to our bungalow. We stopped off to see a man-made reef where you can apparently get some coral or something named after you. Very interesting, but they are definitely doing the right thing with the DIY electrolysis stick artificial reef growing thing they've got going on. Oh my gosh! This is so nice. 
So I, I uh, logged on to my Twitter, link in the description below, <laughs> and uh, I had a message there from a dude who ran this like massive resort. Pearl Beach Resort. Port Pearl Beach Resort. So we went in there and it was just like out of control. Mm. Yeah, he knew we were going to be in Bora Bora, so he invited us to stay and we just could not believe our luck. Like, have not been treated like that for a long time. Some welcome respite from the forward, hot, stinky V-birth. Yeah, he's also a sailor himself. He has a pogo and it goes like 18 knots or something. Yeah, it like planes across the Atlantic. Yeah. So Sylvain gave us a tour of the resort and then we found ourselves at a spa. Merci. A massage. This is the steam room and the sauna. No. Do whatever you want. This is the VIP suite. Hello. When do we go in there? I can't remember the last time I had a massage, and I probably would have enjoyed it a bit more if I didn't spend the whole time giggling at the fact that Riley got stuck with a rather large Polynesian dude. <laughs> Knots. What? Bang -a -bang. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for a lovely dinner. You're welcome. <laughs> the only thing better than breakfast in bed is breakfast brought to you by the traditional outrigger canoe. <laughs> Stoked! At the gym, we worked on earning ourselves a nice dinner. Then, we ate a nice dinner. What's happening, your highnessness? So we just walked up for dinner and we have been escorted to this just ridiculous little setup here. Buffet dinner tonight, and we are sticking out like dogs. <laughs> the next morning, we arose rejuvenated. Our bags were packed, and we said goodbye to the resort. We jumped back in Cunningham with some groceries and prepared to set sail to the Cook Islands. We're going to Rarotonga in the Cook Islands and I'm just reading up on the uh, situation there. It says mooring in the Avatiu Harbour is not easy as it's a med moor with two forward anchors set and then you drop bow lines in and then pull your boat to land to the quay from there. The complicating factors are, and there's six. One, not much space, there's only 500 foot of seawall with the eastern end generally kept free for local fishing vessels. Two, cruising yachts may be poorly moored, generally with two bow anchors, both frequently not set. So, which brings us to point three, poor holding ground. Some sand, some light mud with occasional lumps of broken coral. Four, wind on or just forward of the beam during normal east-southeast trades, which means that as you're trying to come back, the wind is going to be pushing you sideways, which is really bad. Five, continual swell and wave refraction as the harbour is open to the ocean. Six, you need a dinghy to access the shore as due to the continual surge, it is not possible to step foot ashore from your boat, even using a parasail, which is a plank. So the surge is so significant that, you, that your boat like, will rock back and jerk on your anchors and you can't even get off onto the quay. And it's got 18, 18 dot points of actually how to do it. So it's not gonna be easy.
I just woke up to a huge wave crashing over the side and coming in here all over the floor and and at the same time the seat has just broken. I don't know how to explain this. I'm just going to have to show you. There's all the water. And this is what's happened to the seat. What the hell? It must have just been glued on. And the waves just knocked it right out of the floor. Uh oh. Uh oh. What do you think happened? Oh, you can see there there's a screw in the middle. Yeah. That's obviously come undone. With only 10 knots of wind from the east, we got to throw the Jenica up. With this beautiful sail, we were sitting on about 6 knots. Yeehaw! Well, I'm gonna take you down in the crossfire So I called Dad the other day and I was like, oh, you know, I've got a bit of a confession to make. And he's like, what, what's that? And I said, oh, you know, the Jenica, you know how we've been having problems with it? Well, I've been running it backwards for nearly 5,000 miles now and Dad just <laughs> lost it. He just thought it was the funniest thing ever, which, you know, if it wasn't, if it didn't impact so heavily on our comfort and well-being, then it would prob we'd probably think it was funny as well. But it's good to have it finally sorted out now. I can't believe like no one told us earlier. Who told us? Who figured it out that it was on backwards? I read it on a YouTube comment. I read it on a YouTube comment. Guys, you need to help us out more like this. Like we spent the afternoon ignoring each other, listening to music, podcasts, and doing our own thing. And I've been up for a few hours now because the sails are being really loud and annoying. The winds just died off. So I've channeled all that frustration into making pancakes. I made buckwheat flour with chia seed pancakes. And they're very good. I woke up to the smell of pancakes. And Alana, you had done a fantastic job. To me, that's the test of a good chef. Again, again, this is, this is going to make the debate difficult. We shouldn't really what are we watching? be having it in the first place. But John Oliver. So, Absolutely hilarious. Climate skeptic, please make a case Also, a little bit old. <laughs> We're pretty behind the times. I'm going to show you the sunrise. It's really pretty. in bed and I'm really bored we are hammering along at about seven knots on a beam yeah flying having a ball out here by myself got some ugly looking clouds coming over probably gonna have to pull that spinnaker right down and we did soon enough some storm clouds covered the whole sky and we had 20 knots of wind blowing against us so we tore down all the sails and turned the engine on for a few hours until it hopefully passed it's terrible weather we definitely can't sail oh well working hard you making movies babe The weather carried on all arvo. The wind was blowing 25 knots from exactly where we needed to go. Oh, what happened down here, Alina? 
Did you have a mistake? Did you have a mishap? I let go of it for one minute and it flies across the room. What's for dinner? Zucchini pasta. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's not that boys. <laughs> I've been at sea for too long. I'll say. Oh, I'm an idiot. It doesn't have a hot. <laughs> Zucchini pasta time! Now look at the joy on this boy's face. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry. I didn't give you a fork. Oh no. Did you give me some parmesan? Oh sauce? no. Oh no, I forgot that. It was the morning of our arrival to Rarotonga. It had been a pretty uncomfortable trip and I was really excited to arrive and to start feeling human again. This is what happens every time I go to fry eggs when the weather is hectic. really just spread themselves out. It's so cold that I've actually got a runny nose. Can you believe it? It's the first time we've been cold for like, I don't know, like half a year, more. All of the coconut oil that I have on the boat, which is a lot, as you can imagine, <laughs> has like frozen. Everyone stop what you're doing. Seriously, it's very exciting. I've never seen my coconut oil go hard. So, exhibit A, tanning oil, hard as a rock. Check out the cooking oil. <laughs> cooking oil. This is my bathroom coconut oil. Look at that. Unbelievable. Slept under tables and I've played in the rain. I've served Bar and I've cleaned out the drains Some things are certain to give you the blue Rejected my advances, now I'm gonna shoot through <laughs> Hey everyone, so we have some really exciting news I have my friend's boyfriend Julian from Australia He's flying here in a few days to meet us here in the Cook Islands and he's going to be helping us out on board. Great. Uh, he's going to be, oh, we're going to be cracking the whip. He's going to be deck crew. He's going to be scrubbing. Yeah, he had a few months off work, so yeah. He's, he's going to be um, driving the tender. Yeah, that Probably doesn't work. Probably stick him on watch. He'll take the night watch. Yeah, and he's going to be helping me out with stuff on the laptop, which will be great, and holding the Growing camera for his us. Beard. Yeah, um, so this should be good. Looking forward to meeting you, Julian. Indeed we are. I've already met you, Julian. What am I talking about? <laughs> look, look I'm, Riley's looking forward to meeting him. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Looking forward to your arrival. Confusing enough, everyone? <laughs> Cut. Join us next Monday in Raro. We welcome Jules, explore the island and do a little bit of everything.